Here is a 2024 Jeep Wrangler four-door, four-by-four, Rubicon X in black over black Napa leather. This year, Jeep has refreshed exterior elements and updated technology. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and starting with the iconic seven-slot vertical grille, this has been an inspiration from the Rubicon 20th anniversary. It has been refreshed. We have LED headlights and fog lights with the recovery hooks in red. New AEV suspension and exterior components, including upgraded wheels, is available also, which will start with a 2-inch lift and go up to a 2.5-inch lift. Fording through water between 30 and 34 inches, and we have the performance hood with the Rubicon badging on the top. So if you're not wanting to option a 392 because it does drink a little bit of fuel, or the 4xe because you're not into hybrids, you're going to have that performance image with this setup. And now you can option a factory Warren winch that will pull up to 8,000 pounds. And we have the trail cam, which is a few hundred dollars I would option, especially if you're going to receive this Rubicon X package, which gives you these upgraded 17 inch, five spoke with the black pocket wheels. And underneath the hood houses the 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6, producing 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. It's 35 pound-feet of torque less than the 2.0 liter turbocharged four-cylinder. Achieving 16 MPGs for the city and 19 MPGs for the highway, sports-tuned suspension, third-generation Dana 44 front axle, the Dana M220 wide full floating rear axle, true lock front axle and rear axle with a 4.1 rear axle ratio, off-road plus modes. And all of this will have a max towing at 5,000 pounds. We have a convertible top, which I like this a little bit more so than the Freedom 3 piece because you don't have to store anything. Everything is going to be inclusive in the vehicle and you can still remove the door so you have that off-road and trail capabilities. Underbody skid plates that's going to protect the fuel tank, transfer case, and transmission. So when you're doing the rock crawl because of the setup you have or any trails, you're not going to worry about damaging anything underneath. LED tail lights. And we have the performance part Jeep badging right next to the fifth tire with the rear camera and your reverse sensors. A single exhaust outlet with the recovery hook on the side. Cargo starts at 12.9 cubic feet and like every Jeep, you get all the dimensions right here. So you can see fording through water between 30 and 34 inches at five miles per hour. Lift this open and we have some storage that's gonna be underneath the floor with a 12 volt charger. I left the top open so you can see how it looks. Split fold the rear bench at a 40-60 split, maxing cargo to 31.7 cubic feet. We do have the Alpine upgraded sound system. Let's go inside and start up this 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6 so you can hear that exhaust note. leather because we got the Rubicon X package 12-way power seat adjustment for the front heated with the Rubicon badging. Headroom and leg room. Jeeps have a pretty good amount in the foot wells. You're going to notice the refresh is going to start with this 12.3 infotainment screen. We have navigation with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth audio with the forward facing camera and you can also do the reverse both will have full trajectory the only disadvantage is it doesn't cover the whole screen click into the apps with the off-road page which will show the view vehicle dynamics all of the gauges the pinch and roll and of course that front camera the gauge cluster is a 3.5 tft display that can go through an array of information including that off-road page to give you enough insight to let you know what you're doing when you're going off-road in multiple pages of information for the driver leather wrap steering wheel three spoke adaptive cruise control lane keep assist with the cross stitch in red 
climate control going into USBs, 12 volts, all the auxiliary, off-road plus, the sway bar disconnect, the front and the rear. We get the Jeep logo that's going to be surrounded with the leather. The same thing for the transfer case and the key fob for the 24 Wrangler. You also have an area here that you can put the key fob. So that way it stays between the cup holders. You'll park brake. It's soft, it is pushed back, opens up to a small tier, and then that opens up into a larger tier with a USB. The rest of the dash stays the same with the grab handle, and you get the perforated interior. The reworked air vents will be on the lower. You'll still get the circular air vents, and you get the red strip right here. Door panel is going to have soft materials where it needs to be, and a long storage pocket. The nice thing here is we have the auto dimming rear view mirror and the auto opening and closing for the convertible top, which goes all the way to the back seats, and the upgraded Alpine stereo system, which will be right in front of the occupants in the back. Headroom, I got the top open, so I can even go up if I need to. Same thing with legroom. I have plenty with storage behind both of the front seats. We do not receive the grid anymore. It's just a little area that pulls. Air vents in the center, USB, home plug, little storage, and some more storage here with cup holders in the center with the armrest. The door panel is going to be the same as the front, just a little bit smaller, and the opening also is a little bit tougher to get in for taller people. Pretty decent storage pocket. The floor is not completely flat, and because of that tray, you're going to be sharing some feet space. Button shoulder space is fine, and the same thing really with feet space because it's a pretty big area for the back. Headroom is not gonna be an issue even if you have the top up, and like I was saying in the front, you get the Alpine sound system right in front of you, so it blocks off any of the wind that would normally hit second row occupants. Right off the bat, because we have the Rubicon X package, which increases the price quite a bit, it really does a dramatic difference on the exterior and gives more in the interior. So I like that and the style that it looks. The upgraded grille, you can tell a difference if it's side by side, otherwise, you may not be able to notice too much of a difference from the seven slot grill. The performance hood, I like that with the vents. It's not going to be as athletic as the 392, but I'm not expecting that because horsepower is nearly 240 less with this. That being said, it's a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6. Now we've done a review on the turbocharged 2.0 liter and the four cylinder has 35 pound feet of torque more than this. So it actually throws you back pretty good here at 260 pound feet of torque, 285 horsepower. It is a good setup. They have also increased the sound deadening for the cabin. Ground clearance is always good with Jeeps. You're gonna be standard at nearly 10 inches. And once you start doing upgrades with the AEV or just any upgrades that people do with the Jeeps, typically it's anywhere from two to near six inches. It's gonna set up quite a bit. I would recommend that you get running boards when you have the setup here. I'm tall, so it's okay, but it's still pretty difficult to get in. Sound deadening is really about the same. I can't tell too much of a difference. Give her a little go. It's going to be a little bit more refined instead of torque happy compared to the turbocharge or going to the 4xe, which is near the same power as the 392, which is also kind of a sweet spot because you can go full EV around 20 miles and you're getting great MPGs with that kind of performance. I'm gonna check that turn radius. Give her a little performance. It's still going to have some play in the steering. You're going to expect that also with the setup that we have. Going into some pros and cons, I have to start off with the good, which I think Jeep has went a step above in the sense of not just doing styling elements and updates to the technology, but you also have updates to the front and rear axle going into the third generation. And 
you have maximum towing capacity up to 5,000 pounds, which puts it spot on with every single competitor in its class. Some cons to start off is the price escalates quite a bit. Whenever you get the Rubicon X package, it's over $12,000. And I don't think I would recommend not getting it because you are getting so much value in it with the Napa leather, the exterior upgraded tires, and the suspension setup. The AEV, that's also a nice little touch that they are doing for 2024 models in which you can get that with the Rubicon and also you can get it with the 392 or the 4xe. You will not be able to option that with the Sport or the Sport S. 12-way power seat adjustments so now you're getting some luxury amenities but i have to go back to the cons in which you still hear a lot of road noise i understand it's a jeep and we have this convertible top which is a pro because i can open it as i'm driving and i'm not driving five miles per hour so i like that it's more functional instead of having to worry about where to put the three-piece freedom top or any hard top that you buy because typically what happens is people will buy that and then they'll get the soft top so you have two different tops when you're buying the car it literally takes up all of the cargo and storage capacity inside this and only making it a two-seater so you have to put those components somewhere they're not going to sit in the vehicle it will be a little bit tight but this is also natural for jeep the doors are removable so you can still enjoy trails and another nice thing is this navigation also includes over 2,000 trails which is kind of copying the Bronco but I like that Jeep is finally implementing this because they're seeing that people want to go on the trails that's why they have them this year they've implemented around 10 or more different styles of wheel design so you don't have to really go aftermarket you can keep everything in house and optioning a factory winch from Warren that goes up to 8,000 pounds is definitely a plus on the con though if you're gonna have 8,000 pounds that you can winch something out maybe think about that for towing capacity too because it would be nice to see the Wrangler Rubicon tow around 7,500 pounds so I can put you know, a small little vehicle behind me whenever I'm getting ready to go on trails. I can just leave it there and go out for lunch and come back and just get all muddy. You can see what I mean by the sound deadening has not really increased a significant amount. Now we're gonna give her a go. Because the 4xe has so much power, the 392 was my favorite, but it's kind of up in the air which one I personally would do because gas is expensive. So that also makes this a sweet spot because you're similar to the 4xe. You're not going to have the same torque or horsepower, but you're still getting the same capabilities. And it's pretty smooth drive, even though you have all-terrain tires. Going against the Ford Bronco, this is going to have a larger infotainment screen. The front is going to be a little bit more tight. You will have a little bit less cargo, same towing capacity. But when you start getting into these seventy dollars to $80,000 price, you need to start considering, should I stay with the Rubicon X? or just go into a 4xe or even a 392 because you're at the same price in which you know the 392 because it's a v8 they're going to be discontinuing that sooner than later and the 4xe will be something that's going to be taking over so the price may depreciate a little bit more on that going into the future whereas this one and the 392 is going to be a little bit more of a stronger contender in the sense of people wanting that power underneath the hood without a hybrid or a full EV. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Furman Jeep of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2024 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon for our car review.